Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. to let it go. I don't really want to let it go. So how was your weekend? Was it beautiful? Uh, it was full. I had a bat mitzvah on Saturday. Oh, yes. They party. That, was, um, that was sweet. And yesterday was a floral meeting for um, um, a wedding in April, the end of April. Oh, wow. So my weekends are, tend to be work weekends. And um, especially and right now with build- and then you just go ahead and build the business during the week. I get it. I get it. So we are yep. going to talk about everything timelesscelebrations.com with you, my guest today, Peggy Kelly, up Peggy there in Brown. Pasadena, California. Right? We are here. We are we, we are in the, the, the city of the uh, of the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl and historic homes oh pasadena is so rich in history and they they've kept it so um they've kept it very nostalgic too they haven't really changed a lot the historic homes there's a lot of money in pasadena too brains (laughs) Uh, and it's old money old money money. and uh and that because this is where a lot of the the uh, major corporation people who lived in like Chicago in the, this was their summer. This was, this was their winter home. Oh, really? And so that's where the gambles came from. And that's where the Maxwell's came from. And, you know, all of this is, is they had homes here. Wow. Um, and, and that, and those are now in many cases, either historic, like the green and green is the gamble house. Um, and, and that's a museum for, uh, for architecture. And, and furnishings. And then the Maxwell House is, is a, a, an event venue, but also the home of the Western Justice Center, which wow. is an amazing nonprofit that deals in conflict resolution for youth. So that's the, beautiful. When, when you do an event there, then it contributes to the nonprofit. And, and that's where a lot of the homes ha, have become is, is home courts for amazing nonprofits. Wow. Well, Brains, you're at home right here on the edge, the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, the responses are never dull. And like I said, we've got Peggy Kelly. She is an event planner extraordinaire. She's a very layered text, uh, textured woman. She understands what it is to be in the meeting and event space in today's environment. It's not what it was in 2019. The contracts have changed. The venues have changed. The demands have changed. The size of the the, uh, venues have changed. The location of venues have changed. It's just so much. And she is on the cutting edge. She knows her business, okay? We're going to talk about that. And, you know, she's just um, uh, the, the uh, the perfect person to tell a story because she creates an ambiance. It's not just a party. She yes. creates an experience, and that's what you want. You're going to spend a lot of money, so you might as well have some. Well, I mean, might as well have something. You might as well have it, and you have the pictures to say that you were there. My One of my mentors said, baby, if you ain't snapped the picture, you ain't been there. <laughs> Anymore. That's uh, right. If it's not on your phone, it didn't happen. That's right. So, Peggy, tell my brains how you got started in this space and a little bit about you. Um, how I got started in this space. I, I came in, you know, I was thinking about this this morning about um, transferable skills and how we stack our, our work and our life experience into what eventually becomes our, either our career, our passion, or our legacy. And so for me, I, I'm born in Minnesota, raised in Ohio. I'm a Midwest girl, um, got to LA, um, I hate to say it, 40 years ago. Uh, this year, I was a young babe then. You're still young, honey. And I'm still young. Age is a matter of mind. If you don't yeah. mind, it don't matter. It matters. Okay. <laughs> and the hair really is white, and I'm grateful for it. Um, and 
I got I, I got into sales first um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I left college thinking, you know, this is not for me. I'll go figure it out in the world. Got into sales from sales. I, I got into radio and um, and radio broadcasting and writing copy and doing voiceovers and, and that whole arena, which I didn't know was going to come back full circle later, you know, many decades later. But and that's the point is that you just don't know what's going to move the needle when you when you least expect it absolutely absolutely uh, so and you need to be and, and you know people don't do that it's like the stay-at-home mom right she doesn't really realize that she is the accountant she's the cook she's the housekeeper she has organizational skills right she's the uber driver you've got so many transferable skills so think about that when you decide maybe that you want to go back into the workforce or start your own business right peggy Absolutely. And, 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 and you kind of need to list them out. It, sometimes there's what I call a whiteboard moment, which is what do I do, but also what do I love? Mm. And those are two totally different things because I know how to do a lot of things, but what do I love to do? Mm -hmm. what, what energizes me? What, what, get, what gives me you know, joy and purpose on it? Um, when I was in radio, um, I adopted a dog and she unfortunately was, was sick and needed some uh, immediate care. And as my dog walks into my office here and uh, uh, not the same dog. that was Okay. I was like, well, my goodness, she's got a long life. <laughs> um, and so I went to one of my clients, with, which was a country Western bar, San Antonio Rose in San Antonio, mm. Texas. And um and I said, I need to make some immediate money. And tipping is what came to mind. So I became a cocktail waitress. Mm. And I was like, and, and, and it was like, oh my goodness, it's social, it's fun, it's service, it's selling. You know, don't ever discount your cocktail waitresses and your and your food service here, folks. Okay. They they are amazing at what they do. And, and you've got to have customer service and personality. Absolutely. Per personality is key. Personality yeah, is key. Put a tray in my hand. I'm good for all day, mm. you know, and having fun doing it and making a ton of money. Yeah. And now my, my go-to is retail. I don't get tips, but I get so much joy and I was doing cosmetics and putting on the lipstick on people. I did uh, some home decor girl. I, I won't go home broke. Cause I want to buy everything. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a joy. It was a passion of being with the people. So again, finding that. and so Absolutely. you transferred those skills into event planning. How'd you get into right. that space? Well, I, I, when I came to LA, um, which was my goal, I was, I was that little kid in, in, in Minneapolis go, watching Walt Disney's uh, on it's Sunday night, seven o'clock, Wild World of Disney, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just got to get there. I just got to get there. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I got to get there. And, and I hit LA in July of 1982. And, and I was like, home, this is it. I know it. Everything in my life is going to unfold. And, um, and I got a job in a restaurant as, as, a, as a waitress, because, you know, start where you start. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the Hamburger Hamlet up here, oh, family, yes. owned, family owned. Harry, Marilyn Lewis, great couple. They had an amazing training program. And so literally I went from waitress to management training, management training, worked my way up to a general manager. And I was like, okay, I, I'm good to go. Um, but then I realized it was like same place, same thing, same place, same thing. Mm. And, and I have the attention span of a gnat. Um, so I, I stepped out and I, and I said, there has to be another way. And, um, and I met a person who owned a staffing agency. And, and this is before staffing agencies was popular. You know, this was back in 1988. And, you know, he would send people to do catering, not, in, you know, not restaurants, but catering um, to different parties all over. And so I hooked up with him and he sent me where? Walt Disney Studios. No, he didn't girl. Yes, he did. You manifested I, that, didn't you? Oh my God. I know you were happy. <laughs> I, September of 1988, I walked on, on, the, on the studio lot at Walt Disney. 
I called my mom and I said, you're never going to guess where I'm at. She wow. goes, I'm telling with you. And because I was the free spirit in the family. And um, I said, I'm not, I'm not Disney Studios. She goes, you go. She was so excited for me. And I met an amazing man, David Edel, who was a general manager. And he said, we've been waiting for you. I said, I didn't know I was late. He goes, no, he said, we've been waiting for you. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and I knew, uh, you know, you know how you know something, yep. you know, when, when, you, yes. when you hear it in their voice, that this is your mentor. This is the person who's going to change your, your course. And, and he's going to do it lovingly and clearly. And he did, you know, he taught me about catering. He taught me about uh, production. He taught me about contract food, which was going to come in handy later down the road. You know, here again, you don't know what's going to stack. But if you look back on everything you've done, it, it does. It stacks, it stacks, it stacks. And then you get to the place where you're going, oh, and it just tips. And everything just kind of falls in place. I know. That's what happened with me. I was, uh, you know, following my brother around who was in the music and entertainment industry. And we would go to all these high profile celebrity homes, but we would also be in the studio and I would watch carefully how they read the teleprompter, you know, how they created their ads, what they were saying, how they would create that question that would leave you in suspense until the commercial was off, how they broke for commercial, all right. these type of things. And I was very observant. Then I moved into creating and recruiting audiences in Hollywood for major shows, The Doctors, Let's Make a Deal, Queen Latifah, uh, oh my God, KPBS Television, all Wayne Dyer, a whole bunch of great stuff. But then I was able to transfer, like you said, those skills because now I knew what it was to make great television, to create a great audience, to keep them stimulated as well as the orator to keep them stimulated because, you know, you, you feed off of one another. Right. So I, yeah. I, I, right. I totally understand what you're saying about stacking. So again, go back in your memory break and think about, you know, how you used to cut grass. You might be a, a gardener or, you know, have a farm. You never know how your skills will transform. So Absolutely. you started into the event planning space and you started doing that. Now, you know, that is a lot of work, Miss Peggy. People, like, again, I listed it out for you, Brains, at the beginning of the interview, uh, that just what this de entails. And people say, oh, well, you know, I can do it myself. Well, things have changed. Tell us a little well, bit about that space now. What's changed, I, I think what we need to do is define who's in the space. Because the, people think that everyone is an event planner, mm -hmm. and they're not. There are designers there's coordinators and there's, and there's planner producers mm -hmm. and, and they're very different. And, uh, but what happens is they get lumped into this big pile, like they're all one. And um, so when you go back through your, your, your stacking skills, you find out which ones are, are your best skills. You may know how to do all of them, but you may have an area that you excel in. You know, so an event designer, she's going to make it pretty. He or she's going to make it pretty. You know, they're, they're going to do the decor. They're going to do color texture. They're going to do all that kind of stuff. Are they going to get you down the aisle if you're a bride? No. Are they going to run the, the timeline? No. That's the coordinator. Now, the coordinator, she... She, she, she's the logistics hound. She's the one that she's clicking off the, the timeline. Her timelines have got timelines. Every vendor's checked in. She's got all the insurances. Mm. She's the paper hound. She's the paper, uh, the paper hound and she's the timeline. And your timeline is your lifeline. It always is. And now your producer, your planner, your producer is usually your executive producer, which means that they're also managing the budget of this. And they're managing the designer on one side and they're managing the coordinator on the other. Mm -hmm. This person usually has all of the skills, but has the higher level of responsibility. Mm. So when, and let's talk about the wedding world, just because it's the easiest one to define. Um, in the wedding world, there are a lot of wedding coordinators, day of coordinators, which is the worst term in history because it doesn't really exist. Um, don't know where it came from, but it really needs to go away. 
that's the person that is literally just running out the day. They're, they're doing the timeline for you. They haven't been in the decision-making process. They have nothing to do with the design piece. They're, de they're just going to get you down the aisle on time, get your vendors in, get them in, get them out, and get them done. Mm. The designer, is, a lot of times that'll be in your, in your florist or, or your, um, your decor piece, pieces, you know, your furnishings and rentals. They're going to make it pretty. Mm. Now, if you have have a producer on it, which is what I do, um, I'm I'm going to do all of that, and I'm going to help you manage your budget mm. because that is what gets away from most people. Um, in the event space, you can have the same item and it can have five different prices. A girl, I know. Depends on where you shop. That's right. right. Walmart, Amazon. Right. Personalized. So, you know, again, and what people don't do, you know, you don't want to cut corners, but there's some things that you can cut corners on. A lot of people spend, for an example, weddings, a lot of money on invitations. I'm going to tell you, uh, honestly, some of them I've tossed. Others I don't keep because, you know, they're a friend or a friend of a friend or whatever. So that's something that, you know, but it's your announcement. I get that. Photographs, that's something you spend a lot on. Champagne, that's something you spend a lot on. But, you know, you might want to just cut back and maybe not have a full sit down dinner and have champagne and cake. There's right. so many different options out there right now. What is it like in the space? Because when you're negotiating contracts, People got caught up in a lot of kerfuffle during uh, COVID. They had to put those weddings off. They couldn't do them inside. They had to do them outside. The uh, the additional uh, protocols for the food and the staff, that'll yep. run your bill up for servers. What does that look like? Well, when, uh, when COVID hit um, March of 2020, I, I was at the special event, speaking at the special event in Vegas and on March 12th. And that was the last day of the conference. And then everything closed down on March 16th. Mm. And, um, and we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming because we're, we were sitting there and you could just hear your laptop go off, ping, 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 mm. ping, you know, cancel this, cancel that, you know, you know because everyone was just, and, and, and you just watch, it was like the, the dominoes just fell. Mm. You know, I came back, I did a bar mitzvah that had, had cut in size by half it was it, had, it was supposed to be 120 it was 60 you know and um and that and then by monday everything was just done and and we all had to figure this one out and so i'm part of an organization called tuesdays together which is the rising tide society mm -hmm. um and and it's a great organization about collaboration over competition so it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. what industry you're in it just happens to be a little bit um, wrapped around the event space, but check out the Rising Tide Society, and it's a really great resource for education and contacts and resources, uh, uh, anything to do with business, um, and it's all based on collaboration. So our group up here in Pasadena decided there's going to be way too much information for us to figure out as individually, so we, we created a collective. And um, of like, there's nine or 10 of us that are, are committed to this. And, and we have our own little Facebook group and, and that. And, um, and we just navigated, you know, line by line. One of the, the ladies had a bride that was actually part of the health department. So we got things before, we got the news before other people got it because wow. we got it straight from the bride. Um, most contracts, they had a forced, um, um, what's it called? Uh, forced majeure in it, which is like act of God, mm. the clause. And, and that's what everybody leaned on in order to get their deposits back or to get them transferred. That was, that was the first round. And, um, and that was tough because some people just said, you know, it's non-refundable, peace out, you're done. Um, and a lot of people lost a lot of money, you know. Somebody I, told me, and now I don't know, you deal with contracts all the time, but somebody told me that you can't do that anymore. You can't just take people's money, uh, non-refundable. I get it on the booking side, because I get people that book with me as well. But you scheduled the time. You could have had someone else in that slot. But you really haven't done the work. 50% 
of the, the refund, I just don't think that that's fair. I don't think that that's ethical. You know, okay, you still got to keep the, the business running, but why are you going to do it on the back of someone that is now not able to have their wedding? That's so unfair. My, most people, most venues just pushed it. In this, in that Because they understand, we're all in this together. It, the, 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 no one was singled out on this one. You know, it was a group hug. And, uh, and that I think the challenge, some of the areas that had challenge were like your photography and your smaller vendors, your photography, your videography, you know, because they were booked on certain dates. And so when you moved your date, the venue was, was usually where you started to move, to move everything. You know, because without the place, it didn't matter if you had a photograph or not. Right, so, right, right, right. right. So, so, so when they moved things, uh, you know, moved your venue date. Mm -hmm. um, so let's use the Maxwell House. It's 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 easy. So you had your date at the Maxwell House. It was for April 30th. All right. Well, April 30th, we were everybody was still shut down. So they just said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna push it out. And and, and some people actually moved their date three times. Wow which was hard, you know, because they had to move all of their team three times if they could. And in some cases, the, you know, because, you know, photographers and videographers, especially, they have their year booked in advance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so if you moved it to September 30th and they were already booked, they were already booked. Right. So, so yeah, they, so I get that. I get that. that. But however, they still should have, you know, I would work with they, they, people and refer people if they could show a little grace. But a lot of them did. A lot of them did. And some did, just didn't. And you know what? Every business, every arena, every business arena has those players and it make them right, make them wrong. It just makes them different. Right. Yeah. So now with the service and the food, you know, it used to be the day of the buffet. I wouldn't touch a buffet even now. I don't really like them. You know, you see kids stirring in the mashed potatoes and, you know, they'll, well, drop, well, they'll drop some uh, some tomatoes and then they'll throw them back up on the thing. You know, but now they have to wear masks or, you know, uh, I don't know if they're still doing the white glove tray, you know, tray service. Uh, they, they, we, we still tray past everything is, is in a container of, of some level, you know, mm, portion. Okay. See, that's the thing about tray passes. It's 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 a portion piece, so so it's very easy to self-contain that. Okay. But but that's an additional cost mm -hmm. in the right. sense of, of 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 everything that you add on that, you, you know, is an additional cost. Um, on the buffet, and and, and I have to tell you, um, Four Seasons Westlake did did just a great job with this. Um, they they created um, um, a clear plexiglass. Um, uh, that hung from the ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, very easy to put up and, and it looked good. They took good care of it because Lexi can get a little foggy and then it looks weird. Mm -hmm. um, and then their, their team would serve from behind. Mm -hmm. it, now here's a good thing about that. It expedites service. So you get your guests through faster and, and also your portion control. So your food cost is, is in a better place. Um, and it's more personal. Mm. Yeah, uh, and and then they would just roll the staff. So the buffet staff would would then roll onto the floor, or you know, vice versa, or floor staff would roll onto the buffet. So it was more about just the mechanics of it, right? And also the perception the perception of safety, right, right, yeah. right. And you want to create again the greatest experience for your guests. Let's talk a little bit about theme parties. Theme parties are fun parties. I'm going to be 60 this year. Yes, Brad. Oh, I, know. I can't believe it. And I am just at a loss. And I was thinking, you know, some of the things that I like. Do I want to do an air? Do I want to do a Gatsby? Do I want to do... It's going to be on a yacht. So, you know, so I'm just really trying to figure out what I want to do. How do you start to really kind of brainstorm that do you just again have another whiteboard moment where you just throw all the ideas against the wall and then right. really think about what's realistic and and the things you know like if i do a gatsby 
you know, people can get, you know, 19, 20, 19, 30 hats and stuff at the thrift store. That's easy to create that theme. Or superheroes. Uh, they love superheroes. Uh, I, I swear that I am uh, the superwoman. Uh, what's her name? Wonder Woman? Oh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, well, if you're going to be on a yacht, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer, don't gild the lily. Don't, don't compete with your environment. Ah, um okay. make it that way make it work with and for you right that makes sense so so you can have a real um uh, make it almost like a james bond traveling casino um yacht you know very are you a black tie type person very sexy you know um right because you, if you're on a yacht you want people to be comfortable too you don't want True. them to have on all this kind of stuff. You want them to be able to go up on the deck and enjoy that. So, oh, that's good. A traveling casino. That, that's fun. Um, so let me ask a different question. Is, is this a sing? Are, are you doing, are you doing a yacht for a single night or are you doing it for like a weekend? Single night. Okay. So, so with that, you want to transport them if, if you, because you're in a travel mode. You know, because a yacht, you know, on that. So what I would suggest is, is totally transport them um, mm. out of, uh, of because you're in San Diego, right. right? All right. So get them out of their day stuff, transform them, transform yourself. And, and then, what, so when they step on the boat, they step out of their life and into yours. Wow. That's okay. So, so, so. That's why I was thinking, you know, I, I go back to the, and I don't know why James Bond is in my mind, except I just did a James Bond party and it was so fun. And, fun. And, and, and the gambling was so great and, and, and people got dressed up and the guys were in tuxes and the, and the ladies were in, in, in just great dresses and, mm. you know, and, and, and you get hot music going and, right. you know, it's right. just, you know, and, and you make a really great cocktail if you're a drinker and if you're not a drinker, who cares? You know, just put, <laughs> just put right. it in a great glass. Don't care. Put it in a great glass and we'll give you a cherry. Okay, that's there great. You go. You know, that you is know, great. You know, and, and because I think people miss romance. We, you know, we're, we, we miss that, you know, and 60 is sexy. I'm 66, so I can say that. Oh, you know? yeah. Please, you know? I'm looking forward to it. It's an interesting moment, I have to tell you. Oh, yeah, it's a rite, but it's a rite of passage. Right. It's, you know, it, it is a rite I mean, of passage, so, and yeah. everybody's not going to get there. Right. But I, I, I like what you I like what you say about, you know, transporting them into something different, and you have to consider the timeline, too. You know, what time of day it's going to be, you know, how right. long you're going to be at a certain venue. What do you think about, I'm a giver. Okay, so people always come to my parties and they always leave with a swag bag. You right. Know, I've got some of the greatest vendors in the world that love their products to be in those bags. What do you think about that? Do you think that that's showy? Do you think that's overkill? Do you think that that is, uh, you know, shows appreciation? I, th I think that if, if that's something you're known for, stay with it. If it's something you're not known for and all of a sudden you just do it, it people might feel it's a little off. Mm -hmm. um you know we all I, not well i can't say that many people have a signature item mm -hmm. that that they're known for um and, and and so not that it's expected but it's always so recognized you know, <laughs> yeah like that you know absolutely um so you know if if it's truly given freely right. and from your heart right. then do it if it but i um, but party favors per se, um, you know, sometimes I just do ed things that are edible because people will deal with that. They, they, they need more stuff. Like they need a home. Right. 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 Uh, right. All this, especially at this age, you know, we, we, our stuff has got stuff. So, so we're right. inundated, but, um, but they're doing know, a lot of, uh, pastries now, exotic pastries, maybe with your picture on it or, right, you know, great, or designer cupcakes. And so that's right. really the, that's really the, the thing now. You know, uh, we, we did um, uh, donuts and coffee so that they had it for in the morning mm. for breakfast. 
So it, we had a signature thing from, from Starbucks, all packaged with, with uh, their name on it. And then, uh, and then we had little mini donuts um, um, that were packaged with it too. And so on their way out, um, they, they now had breakfast. Hmm. So it, you know, it's kind of thinking it through, first of all, who's your audience and you, and you know about audience. So who's your audience? What's the age group? Is this full family or is this adult only? You have to ask yourself that one. That's because the dynamic changes the minute youth is involved. Oh girl. Yes. I know. I tell you, they'd be yes. stirring up in the buffet. <laughs> Yeah. Well, not just that. The energy is different. You've got, you've right. got, you have, you, you, you've got to keep them entertained. You've got to keep them amused. Right. No. It's yeah. And I and, and and you know, there's a part of me that that's why I asked if, if it was a multi-day event because I would I would put the youth and family on one party and then have an adult party on the yacht and yeah. then have breakfast for anybody else the next morning who who, who not that you've missed or that you want to revisit with. Right. So it's like family on Friday, you know, adult party on Saturday night on the yacht, and then um, and then uh, brunch to, to put a bow on it, and you're mm -hmm. out the door. Wow. Well, that is really a lot of great information. Thank you so much. Tell my brains how to get in contact with you. I'd love for them to consult with you. Brains, she is a queen in her industry, you know, she wears the crown. Consult with Where's her. my crown? Where's my crown? <laughs> Consult with her. But, you know, even if she's not doing something in your particular state or area, I'm sure that she has a Rolodex full of people that she can refer you to uh, that know what they're doing. You have to know, like I said, the contract is very important. Your budget and price point, you, need, you know, got to have a little flexibility in there. What your expectations are, if you want to give a gift, if you want it to be a theme, if you want it to be destination, all of those things kind of, you know, run them through your mind and then present them to somebody like Peggy. You know, the, the nice part, I do consulting all over the U.S. Mm. Um, because I'm an ideas person. I'm also a, uh, a storyteller, as you, as you shared, because I'll, t I'll take it all the way through, just like we did with you you know, of, of where are you going? What are you doing? You know, who are you? You know, a lot of times, especially with Pinterest, it, it's been challenging that, you know, people bring this Pinterest board and they say, I want that. I said, but that's not you. I, said, I know, but I like that. And I said, okay, so let's find out what do you like about that? Mm. You know, pull it out of them. And this takes some time and, 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 and listening skills. Right. I listen a lot more than I talk. Absolutely, because yeah. you want that person to be happy. And the bottom line stops with the client. This is customer service on steroids. Absolutely. And there's a lot of emotion that goes behind it. A lot sure. of emotion. A lot yeah, of emotion. And, and they think it's just in the wedding world. Get get behind someone who's passionate about their cause. And mm -hmm. and, and and you will see, um, you know, because people in the, non I do a lot of nonprofit because I'm very community focused up here. Um, and because my background has been in museums a lot that are, are, are community-based. And so you get a committee when you're, oh, when, God, you're yes. when you're planning by committee. Ooh. Oh my goodness. So you've got, that, yeah, you've got so many talking heads and everybody right. has an idea and then they get all in their feelings if their idea is snubbed, you know, right. but yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a bad Pinterest board most days. You know, it's a negotiation. So tell my brains how to get in contact with you, Peggy. Well, uh, you can reach me via cell phone, 626-222-1808. Uh, I love how easy my number is. Or Peggy at timelesscelebrations.com. I'm a late night girl, so you can call, you know, I usually answer my emails later in the evening um, because I'm doing things during the day but I will get back to you. And it really does not matter where you are in the world with me because I, I, I am mobile. And, and also I love the different time zones because a lot of my clients wake up to my emails in the morning and start their day there. Well, they're gonna start their event and they're gonna have one heck of a time. Brains, we are planning the party, okay? The party, the wedding, the celebration of life, the bar mitzvah, the baby shower, you know, or just a great 
you know, getting to know you kind of thing. Yeah, gatherings are coming back. And um, yeah. uh, what I what I came up with during the pandemic was, was a concept called Petite Soiree. And, and Petite Soiree was, was about having a small gathering, but, but a soiree was very um, targeted in the sense of whether it was a theme or a topic or, or, or something that you, you had a piece of education involved in it. You know, like if it was a wine tasting or maybe it was a, you know, a, a food night or whatever. And you would just bring like 12 to 20 people together because there for the longest time, that's all you could have. Right, right. Like Ab- absolutely, absolutely. You know? And that um, one of the best weddings I ever did which was 24 people. Wow. And it was because it was literally the two families mm. that came together as one. And it was, it was in La Quinta. It was so beautiful. I bet. You know? they, I bet. they did it at an Airbnb. Airbnb, I'm sure, has, has just skyrocketed with uh mm. with everything that's going on and, and that and i'm great and we're all very grateful to that now on your website do you have some uh photographs of some of the events that you've done unfortunately my website got hacked oh, and man. so the one that i have up right now is just basic information we're working on uh, on the new one as we speak right okay um i am i have to admit my social media is is not anywhere where it could be um, most of my business is referral and repeat. Yeah. And, and, and you um, know what? I like the referral and the repeat. And again, like you said, I'm not trying to have a template. I want it to be very individualized. Right. So you are working with each person to customize their wants, their needs, and desires. Right. And, you know, color schemes, you've got color boards, you've got all that kind of stuff. But the best thing to do, Brains, is to have the consultation, have a Zoom meeting. Right. Okay. I, give, I, give, I, give, I give free consultations wow. to everyone. It's just how it goes. And, and that because it's matchmaking. It's right. about energy. It's, a, it, it's about communication. It's about vision. You know, am I for everyone? Could be, but probably not. Um, oh, you're for everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, like I say, could be. Absolutely. I can, I can design and produce anything from, you know, they say, well, your company is timeless celebrations. Does that mean that you're traditional? And I was like, no, it just means that I believe that we're all timeless Mm -hmm. and and that we want our lives to be, our our organizations to be, our love to be timeless. And it is, Mm -hmm. but you know, I tend towards to be a little bit more classic and traditional, a little black dress girl. But I can make a very cool and edgy, you know. Right, uh, right. Noir and party. Uh, and that's what people, you know, are they're they're really kind of looking at the trends and looking at what's going on and what is the party right now. Uh, I went to a, I went to a party and I'm gonna tell you I was bored because they ain't had no music. I what? What, I, girl, what? I love some music. It sets the ambiance. You don't you don't ever want to walk into a cold room. Oh, they they do it all the time. And they just, well, we'll have conversation. I don't want to just talk all the time. Sometimes I want to be Bob. Sometimes I want to get on the floor. You know, uh, it just sets the mood. But you have set the mood in such a timeless way. Thank you so much, Peggy, for being here with me on the edge. My brains absolutely love you. I love you too. And I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more. I got some work out a few things. And you know what? You might be doing a yacht party for me. Oh, I, I, I'm actually doing a yacht party uh, on Fantasy Yachts uh, on April 2nd, I think it is. Wow. I, lo- I love Fantasy Yachts. They have, they have two large, they, they have a, their smaller boat and, you know, for 100 and under, and then they have the bigger boat for 300. And, and, wow. and so I have a lot of experience with that. Well, I'm and, looking yeah. forward to it. I'm looking yeah, forward to you'll, it. You'll have a great time. I you bet. Know? And, and, I and bet. you have your date set. Uh, you know what? That's what I said. I got a couple things that's pending right now, and I just need to do it. And it's August, so I got to get on it. Right? You, you know, got to get up. I got to get yeah. got to get on it. I got to book the yacht, so I'm going to be doing that probably next. Oh, week. Okay. So, 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 so tell me a secret. When's your birthday? August. August. August what? Seventeenth. Okay, just checking. Okay. So yeah, so we'll definitely connect again. Okay. Thank you so much, brains. It's time to get your party on. Play some music. Play some music and some work photos. with a great yeah work with a great person that already knows and takes all the guesswork out of it and all you have to do is like I'm gonna do show up. <laughs> well, and and you'll say, 
for the people who are budget conscious, they said, well, that's an expense. The amount of money you pay us, we guarantee we will save you that much and more. Mm, mm, mm. That is my guarantee okay. because you're going to shop on, on the internet and I'm going to shop where, where, where we shop. Exactly. And, and the savings is substantial. Exactly. I'm going to say you're in the industry, you know, right. where to go. Gonna, you know who the people are and they know you, they're going to, they're going to hook you up and give you a deal because you're a repeat customer and a client. That's right. And do you really want to spend 200 hours doing your events? No. If you, if you put your hourly wage for 200 hours, that's the average uh, of a special event, mm-hmm. anywhere from two to 400 hours, weddings are 400 wow. hours. Wow. So if you have a partner who's doing that and all you're doing is going, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And your contracts are negotiated for you and your resources are done for you. Is that a value? That is a value. It is a value and you are a value and a jewel. Thank you so much for being here on the edge. We'll talk soon. All right. Be well. All right. Bye-bye.